some tea, good thing now. It took like 20 minutes. It's for cold in here. Such an average shot. Uh, well, anyway, welcome back to the Genus Brewing channel. As you probably just saw, we have an installed glycol-based cooling system now. That's right, and as we preluded to before, if you're opening up a brewery or even if you're operating a small style brew house in your wherever you are in your home, uh, it's always a good idea to get an overpowered glycol chiller, a chiller that can handle a little extra because expansions and it's cheap cooling power. <laughs> On this video, we are going to show you how I put this system together. Um, kind of show you some of the ways I wired things up, how it turns on after you do a defrost cycle. So let's get to it. <laughs> Boom, how we go. Yeah. Come on, Pedro. Let's get out of this frigid, frigid oh. box. Woo, alrighty. Peter, what is between my legs? So this tiny little thing right here is actually all that's been running our walk-in cooler right there. It's only a half horsepower glycol chiller, and we are told that this is undersized, which is why this was a very ambitious project for us to try to take on. But that said, it's been keeping up just fine. We've been keeping that walk-in between 34 and 38 degrees, even with some traffic to it. Being a, a brew house, we're actually, ha we have five barrel tanks in right now that are jacketed and we're gonna be getting some 10 barrel and some larger size tanks in. It's always a better, better idea to oversize your glycol chiller. And so when you get a bigger unit, we're definitely gonna make sure we have some extra tonnage to keep up with the walk-in and all our tanks and any future expansions we need. Which brings us to some of the cool other benefits that come with a uh, glycol based fan unit because they're not just for chilling walk-in coolers. Uh, one of the other great things you can use them for is actually just conditioning larger spaces, spaces that don't need to be quite as cool, whether you have just a large warehouse that say it's scorching hot in the summertime, you just want to drop that down to 70, 75 degrees, you can use a unit for there. Also if you have say a cellar room, you know, for something that you're just trying to keep beer somewhat cold in. And with not having to keep them quite as cold, first of all, they take way less tonnage than trying to actually chill, chill a room because it's a very large delta T differential in temperature and you, that makes them super cost efficient because you don't need the defrost kit. Yeah. One last thing too, which I have noticed since we've installed this, uh, that would be awesome for any room, especially if you're you know, over on the east coast down south, is that they actually do a great job pulling humidity out of the air just like a commercial refrigeration system would, but again at an absolute fraction of the cost. Yep. So again, the, all the cryer lines that we have through uh, morebeer.com, I'll go ahead and link their, their entire page in the description below. But uh, that said, I think that covers the basis of the fan units and the glycol chillers and what you should be doing both for your brew house and the commercial scale and if you have a brew house that you're building out at home. Let's jump into the install and what all we did. So outside it's pretty simple. I've got my pump on the side down here and I've got some lines that I've insulated. Uh, these go into some three quarter inch insulated PVC pipe which run from my chiller into the cold room. I've also got a couple shutoffs um, and a filter that's actually installed in line with my shutoffs, which is pretty important because uh, we definitely don't want to plug up those heat exchanging fins. And uh, that's about it for the outside. So let's go back inside and I'll show you all the install I did there. Let's go freeze our tits up. Into the abyss of coldness. Why don't you start with that defrost kit, uh, cycle? All right, so defrost is uh, pretty simple. It actually has a thing inside that you can set on a regular schedule, but for my purpose, I'm gonna quiet this down for you so you don't have to scream the whole time. Um, so yeah, I just did a manual defrost. So right now it's turning some heat coils on. Uh, it's gonna melt any ice that might be built up in there and it's gonna drain down through my condensate pump. Um, so to start out with the way I built this whole thing, um, we're going to kind of start with the power. So this particular unit um, requires 220, I believe they actually all require um, 220 um, power to them, but it doesn't actually pull too much, unlike what somebody told me, Peter. That was, no, that was me, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got way, way more power than I need to running this. Uh, this unit only pulls about 1500 watts, uh, so a 20 amp circuit will work just fine. So that power is going into this controller box. What this controller box acts as is essentially a power logic controller. Uh, it's got a bunch of relays in it that are going to tell things to turn on and off. Um, one of those relays goes and tells the fan to turn on, and it also turns the heating coils to turn on when you hit the defrost and another relay will turn this little solenoid on that says, hey, I need to cool down, open the solenoid up and let some glycol flow through the system so we can start cooling this room down. 
Um, both of those are going to be connected to my temperature controller unit, um, which right now is in Celsius, but you might be able to change it to Fahrenheit. I'm not that worried about it because I can do conversions. Um, and then it's got a little temperature sensor down here, which you can also mount anywhere you want. As for the cable I've got running to these, um, they didn't send me with any cable, so I actually just found some uh, Cat5 data cable lying around and it's been working just fine. Let me pull this apart and kind of show you where wires went on there. Clap. Alright, so as you can see now, we've got the uh, uh, power cable running to the data interface and the cable port is uh, cir circumventing the power. Uh, so Peter doesn't really know how to do any of this. It's a good thing he's got me. Um, but anyway, this might look like a hot mess, but it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to have two line ports that I'm going to give you some probably cut shots of, close-ups of. Um, you got line one and line two coming in. Um, those are going to be your two legs of your 220. Uh, that's going to power the whole board. And then coming out on two, one, two, and three will be your heater, solenoid, and fan. Uh, probably not respectively, but they will send you some directions if you, if you do this that give you a diagram on which is what. Um, and then one thing to consider is going to be uh, the data wire, which is coming from our temperature controller in here. Um, I've arbitrarily wired these guys as blue, orange, and brown. Um, you can do whatever you want as long as they correspond with the right bits on the temperature controller. And uh, that pretty much sums up inside of the box here. Um, so over on Peter's, above Peter's head there, <laughs> um, you're going to have those same wires going into the temperature controller. And then coming out of the temperature controller, you're going to have simply one set of wires that goes down right over Peter's shoulder to the temperature sensor itself. Which right now I'm heating up with my body heat. Yeah, so the beauty of, of doing this is you can actually plug these in outside because oh, generic wire and it's the it's beautiful. Um, one of the really nice features about having this control unit that you probably don't get in a lot of other systems is, the, is that it does have a timed defrost on it. Um, this is a beautiful thing. It means that you can have it set up, go off in the middle of the night um, when you're not trying to serve beer because it will probably warm the room up for a little bit and uh, it'll defrost, it'll clear off any ice that might be in there, and uh, you're ready to go by the next morning. Yeah. Really, uh, the only tricky parts, I guess, are making sure that you read the diagrams that you can pull up online, and then also uh, make sure everything's wired up inside the unit itself, which I will do a little bit of a cut shot to, and I can show you how I wired all that up. Uh, and in this electrical box, I have uh, what you would probably call uh, another bus bar or uh, probably just a junction of some sort. But anyway, so this is where all of my defrost coils, which are going to be these guys, are located. Uh, and so we have uh, 120 volt here coming in and 120 volt offset to make our 240 total, uh, which will then get divided up into our heating cables there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the ground I actually ran all the way through this box and connected straight to the frame. I thought that was a better connection than the little wimpy wire they had here uh, since this is an overkill circuit. I got that other line running down through these grommets here and down into another junction point uh, which will then go out of this box down here and into our blower frame. Testing, one, two, three, testies, one, two, three. Ah, yeah! So one last thing that we haven't mentioned yet is how we insulated that room. Um, the cheapest option for us actually ended up go being going with a spray foam insulation on the inside. Uh, we got that thing on average between the spray foam, uh, the uh, drywall, and the walls on either side. It is what, 35 R value? Something like that, yeah. So very, very high. The only spot that we're missing basically is insulating that floor like Logan mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, how we got that room ice cold, and uh, now it's nice because we can both just sit back here and have someone pour us a beer. Yeah, so like Peter can pour us some beers, and we can... Because you're, you're closer though. And we can... But like... But they're... Alright, bring the camera. Ah! Some Chris Morning Pilsner.
Oops. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it for how we got that room ice cold. And uh, now it's time for a nice breakfast beer before we open up shop. Yep, even though that's like two, three hours away right now. We start a little early here. <laughs> Uh, but uh, one more quick rundown on Cryer fan units. They're awesome ways to uh, use your glycol, existing glycol, because you should buy an overpowered one, to cool a large room, get a cellar cold to cellar temperatures, or do what we just did, which is make beer happen. Make cold beer happen. Yeah. Stay tuned for more on how the business brewery opening thing goes, and then follow our Instagrams. And our Facebergs. And what else have we got? Uh, a website, maybe? That might yeah, happen we eventually. Got a, we got a website-ish thing. Um, sort of thing. We'll be doing a brewery update soon for you guys. So, uh, yeah. A lot more down the works. We're not talking goods because we tired. I got like five hours in. Thanks for chiming in, everybody. Viva la beer. We'll see you next time on Genus Brewing. Scorpow. Bam. Fan unit recap, and then just go straight to the full install. Your eyes are deeper than the Marianas Trench. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I just wanted them to look clean and clear and under clean control. And clear. Like proactive. Link in the description. That defrost did not last very long, did it? There probably wasn't much frost. What do you want from me? Why was I in that shot? I love your love. Because your face is so beautiful. That's true. I'm very handsome. <laughs> <laughs>